Faithful he is. Faithful. Faithful. Even when we're faithless, he still waits for us to turn towards him and get counsel, correction, and direction because it always brings protection. <laughs> Yes, what a time and season we are in. The battle is on. Everyone say the battle's on. Battle's on. <laughs> big, time. big time. I'm telling you, it's big time. First Corinthians chapter 1. Glory. <clears throat> You know, the kingdom of God has two types of citizens in it. It has the citizens that are promoters, they're beginners, they're citizens of the kingdom. Then there is those that are warriors. There's a difference. See, many people go to church, they learn, they learn, they learn, but they never learn how to fight. Amen. There's a difference. See, so there's two types of citizens in the kingdom. There's one that's just a citizen, it's part of the kingdom, but then there's a warrior. Amen. And that's what God is trying to turn around those who are plain citizens in the kingdom and turn them into warriors because now is the time to stand up. Because we've got to win this war. We've got to win this war before we depart. It is only the body of Christ that's resisting and holding back the powers of darkness. And too many people are so caught up in their little worlds in false reality that they're not seeing the true reality. And they're not fighting according to the way they should. Even in our penetrating prayer booklets, we have that warfare prayer that's two pages to make it real simple for people to battle. If they'll just pick it up and speak it, and quit reading it. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Come on, we're going to speak because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Amen. You eat light, you become light. Amen. When? You speak it. How many of y'all know the word of God is light? Amen. It's life. Life changing. Verse 18, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Hello, that's real simple, isn't it? But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise and where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? <laughs> For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are what? Called. called. Everyone say, I'm called. Both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not mighty, many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God in righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. So powerful. In this, 
after we accept the call, remember God chose you, he called you. You didn't call him. You called him after he'd been calling you for a while. Even though you tried to disconnect your number from God, he still had it. Amen. Amen. He knew your number, man. Didn't matter. You can hang up every time he called. Doesn't matter. And then we find, then it got to a point where it's like, you know what? I need your help. Because he'd been drawing us and calling us and calling us and calling us. And we were uh, trying to do our thing, go our way. We, I know it all. Right? But we didn't know nothing, did we? Hallelujah. So after we accepted the call of God from the creator, he called us not only out of darkness, and, but he called us also into a fellowship with his presence, his power, and his truth through the Holy Spirit. He called us into fellowship with his presence, his power, and his truth through the Holy Spirit. So the moment you accepted your call, you now step into a new reality. The moment you accepted that call, you stepped into a new reality. And under this new reality, we are now under a new set of rules, a new set of laws, and boundaries. What's he doing? He's keeping the individuals and new creations in Christ in a protected state of being in an eternal environment. environment. That's his purpose, that's what he tries to do with me and you all the time. All the time. Each, and so now, now in this, now we are connected to this new reality, amen, which is in a, an, another realm, from another realm. This new reality is from the eternal realm. So the new reality that you and I walk in is from the eternal realm. Each realm right now is fighting for reality. There is a battle of reality in people's lives. There's two realms. One realm is a lie and one realm is the truth. There's two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. And right now there has been, since the moment you came into this world, there was a fight over your existence to try and drive you or keep you from the true reality. And that true reality could only come from the eternal realm. Not from the second heaven where Satan's kingdom is. Not from this realm, but only the eternal realm. That's why Jesus came and paid the price and opened the eternal port for all mankind. What was he doing? He, was, he came from an eternal place God Almighty, the divine nature of God Almighty came in Jesus Christ, the divine power, the divine truth, divine character, and the divine presence came in Jesus the Christ so that he not only paid the price for me and you, but then he could live in me and you. And then he would cause us to do those things because the Holy Spirit will cause you to live under the new rules and laws and set boundaries for us. He will cause you. He will convict you when you get close to them. Why? Because he constantly wants me and you to live in the new reality which is connected to the eternal realm. Again, there is a battle over reality. What is truly reality? Now we know there's a temporary and there's an eternal. Amen? But we're no longer to live according to the temporary. We're to be living according to the eternal. 2 Corinthians 4. Realms and realities. Before my wife asked me what the title is. Realms and realities. <laughs> Realms and realities. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. <clears throat> I, I, 
this chapter to me is some of the, one of the most profound realities of what's happening. Is everybody there? Amen. Good. Are you ready? Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel, no, the gospel is a message of truth. What truth? The eternal truth. If this message of the eternal truth is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? They're perishing. Whose minds the God of this age. Who's the God of this age? Satan and his kingdom. The God of this age has blinded them who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Now remember the word believe means to follow. That's why many people who say they believe but don't follow are not living in the true reality. They're still living in the false reality. They are pretenders. Verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down and not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, because what you speak is what you eat. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. That grace, which is God's plan, having sped through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. Now, can your inward man be renewed day by day if you're not cooperating? No. That's when everything ceases. So it takes cooperation. It says, verse 17, For our light affliction, which is a, for a moment is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which we are, which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Why? Because one is a temporary realm and the other one is a, an eternal realm. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. Again, the gospel, the message of true reality. That's what the gospel is about. It is a message of true reality. It is the divine light, divine life, divine love, and divine power to maintain the light of the true reality, which is connected from the eternal realm. Why? Why do we need this power? It's to resist. Everyone say resist. resist. The false reality from the temporary realm of darkness. We need the power of God to resist the false reality from the temporary realm of darkness, of lust, of fear, pride, hatred, greed, death, works of the flesh. That's why it says you and I are hard-pressed from the forces of evil forcing itself upon individuals to return them back to the false reality or imprison them until death because they've never reached the true reality. 
This is the powers of darkness. That's why you see all the conflicts all over the world right now because the battle is over reality. The word tells us that there'll be a time at the beginning of birth pangs where there'll be rumors of wars, earthquakes, all kinds of things going on. We've been in that for a period of time. We're about to exit the beginning of sorrows and enter tribulation. That's all we're doing is waiting for that seven-year peace treaty to be signed, which we know is false. Once it's signed, we got three and a half years left. God willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To believe is to speak the gospel of light. Amen? Why? Because you're sowing in the spirit, you're reaping life. This, we are battling for position on a constant arena against the realm of deception, <laughs> the seen realm, and the unseen realm of the eternal realm. That reality, there is a constant battle over reality. True reality is relationship with the Father through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. That's true reality. As relationship with the Father in the Spirit in the name of Jesus. Because you can only access the Father through the Holy Spirit. That's the only way. True reality is relationship with the Father through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus paid the price for reconciliation between man and creator. Anything else, I'm going to say that again, anything else is false reality. Anything else is false reality. You cannot get to God, the Father, creator, through no other way. That is false reality. That's why there's all kinds of goofy religions. Jesus never came to bring religion. He came to bring the kingdom. Amen. Bring in citizens so that they become warriors. His purpose was to reconcile everything back to its original state of being. Again, true reality is relationship with the Father through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. In other words, it's his kingdom. It is a kingdom of light against the kingdom of darkness. You know, remember when Jesus showed up, what he said, behold the kingdom. Repent and believe in the gospel. <laughs> Why? The kingdom of God is what? At hand. And what was he saying? Forsake your present life for the eternal life. Forsake your present life for the eternal life. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. The eternal presence, power, and truth. And John 16. Is everybody okay? John 16. And verse 5. Realms and realities. Anybody ever know somebody that was uh, walking in true reality to slip back into false reality? Many. It always reminds me of the Matrix movie, you know? That guy loved steak so much and he couldn't get it anymore because they were eating nothing like swamp water, you know, swamp food. <laughs> he said, man, I'll take me back. I'll, I'll turn in everyone just to taste that steak again, but make me famous. <laughs> False reality. He ended up getting killed anyway, so. John 16, verse 5. Is everybody there? Jesus was speaking to the disciples and said, But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. Now listen, this is pretty powerful. None of them asked him where he was going. Because they really didn't have the true reality yet. True reality can only come through the Holy Spirit. That's why he's called the spirit of truth. That's why many people can read the word and never reach true reality. They're still bound by the letter and not free by the spirit. It's totally different. They have a surface level of relationship 
Only through the Spirit of God can you have an intimate relationship. In verse 7, and Jesus said, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I'm going to send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the rule of this world is judged. I still have a lot of things to say to you, but you're not going to be able to bear them yet until you got the Holy Spirit. Because you won't understand or interpret my language. However, when he, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of what? Truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on, my own, on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. A little while and you will not see me. And again, a little while and you will see me because I go to the Father. Again, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. No one can receive the Holy Spirit. Only those accepting the call. No one. Only those accepting the call of Christ Jesus. Through repentance, can you accept and receive the Holy Spirit? He convicts the world's way of association with the kingdom of darkness. The world of deception. He convicts the world. He convicts individuals because of living according or associating with the kingdom of darkness, the world of deception. It's the world of deception realm. It's of lust, pride, fear, works of the flesh, works of evil. He convicts. Remember, the throne of God is just and righteousness. It's justice and righteousness. So then he says, with righteousness, he will judge the world. When people are baptized in the Holy Spirit, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty is now, in other words, they are submerged into true reality. They're submerged into a whole other reality through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are submerged into a whole new reality. Your eyes saw differently. You hear differently. Your heart is different. You are a brand new person through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because true reality is connected to eternal realm. Now the eternal realm has taken presence in you called the kingdom of God. Is everybody with me? The kingdom of God is the eternal realm. Now he takes presence in you. That's why the word says the kingdom is neither here nor there, but within you. It can only be brought by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can only come when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because the blood always goes before the Spirit. There must be repentance first. Of course, there's the baptism of water, but then there's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus commanded everyone to be baptized. He said, do not leave Jerusalem until you're all baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues where you're able to have power to drive out evil. Too many people skip that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, the eternal presence, power, and and truth of God Almighty is now sub, you are now submerged into this new true reality from the eternal realm with authority, dominion, and fellowship. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He's going to guide you to all truth and he's going to keep you into the boundaries so that you maintain the, in that arena of true reality knowing what you see is only temporary. Is everybody Okay. In other words, in everything that's going on, whatever you see going on in the physical realm, it's going on in the spiritual realm. Amen. So you're seeing battles and conflicts. And why? Because the greatest fight, I mean, we are at maximum level fighting right now. And those that are not warriors and battling in the spirit are, known, are just citizens. So the warriors are battling to get the kingdom of God manifested on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we battle for. 
and we battle to drive out evil. We are the restrainers of Satan's kingdom or things to be worse than what it is. Romans 14. Romans 14. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Pentecost You know, there's associated with the fruits. You know, I mean, the Feast of the Lord, you got uh, Feast of Passover, right? You got Feast of Unleavened Bread. You got Feast of First Fruits. You got Feast associated with Pentecost uh, uh, in between, which is a Feast of Weeks. Uh, what we call Feast of the Weeks or Feast of Pentecost, but it's actually the next feast is the Feast of Trumpets. But in between... These two feasts, Pentecost, that event, is still going on. It's not stopped. Because that's where the church, the church was established by the uh, anointing of Christ Jesus. It is now the foundation. It's no longer the letter. That's why it's not by might nor by, peer, by, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He says it is the ministry of the spirit now, no more the ministry of the letter. In other words, it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit from that point on. So Pentecost, from that point on, from Pentecost on, all the way to the next feast, the Feast of Trumpets, is, is actually the still birthing of the church. Amen. That's the whole birthing of the church. In power. In power. Not in letter, in power. A lot of people got a lot of knowledge and no stinking power. They don't even power, power over their emotions. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Romans 14. 14, 16. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil. Verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? What's the first one? Righteousness and peace and joy. Where? In the Holy Spirit. That is the kingdom of God. Peace. It's righteousness. Peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. The kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? It's the, it's the true reality from the eternal realm. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. Everybody there? Let's speak it. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding what? Dark. In other words, they don't have an understanding. Well, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's very, very difficult to have the true understanding. You're always questioning God instead of trusting God. Being alienated, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness and to work of all uncleanness with greediness. But you've not so learned Christ. In other words, Christ here is a representation of the divine nature of God. Indeed, if you have heard him and have now been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful loss which is associated with the false reality the realm of 
temporary darkness, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new, new man which was created according to God in the true what? Righteousness, Righteousness and holiness. holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath and do not give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to someone who is in need. Let no corrupt, corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit. This is vital, because he just told us everything about grieving, everything that he just said is about grieving the Holy Spirit. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, right? Then he goes on. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. What's he going to grieve? Let all bitterness grieve the Holy Spirit. Wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be, uh, be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Now, this is awesome because grieving the Holy Spirit is rejecting true reality from the eternal realm. By not abiding in the rules and laws and boundaries guided by the Holy Spirit, we grieve Him. Why? Because there's no fruit of righteousness. It causes a person to step back into false reality of self from, from the temporary realm of deception and eventually death unless they're willing to come out of it. Matthew 6. Realms and realities. The fight over reality. <clears throat> Matthew 6, 31, please. Oh, are you ready for this one? Do not what? Worry. worry. Is worry fear? Yeah. You bet your sweet bippy. <laughs> Therefore, do not be fearful. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. That's how he gets people to do all kinds of goofy things. Fear. Fear. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what we shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, even the Gentiles seek. But your Father, your Heavenly Father, knows all the things that you need, right? Okay. But He tells us how to get them. Therefore, seek first the what? The kingdom of God. Now, wait a minute. What's the kingdom? It's the... Tr okay. It's, well, let's get a little bit in another arena here. It is the true reality from the eternal realm, right? Okay. But yes, the kingdom of God is also peace, righteousness, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we want to seek the kingdom of God, the eternal realm, I mean, uh, eternal, uh, the true reality from the eternal realm. It says, seek ye the kingdom of God in his what? Righteousness. And all things shall be added to you. All things, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Hmm. First seek the kingdom and his righteousness. <laughs> that is such a key. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness. See, people seek the kingdom of God for something to get, but they're not seeking his righteousness, and they wonder why they don't get. Amen. Because without the fruit of righteousness... You're in a false reality. Amen. Only the living in the true reality from the eternal realm will produce fruits of righteousness. That means you are right standing with God Almighty. You are walking under His rules, laws, and in His boundaries. Has everybody got it? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 5, while we're here.
That means the only thing you can do is eat from the tree of life because that's the only way you produce the fruit of righteousness. But if you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is the temporary reality, amen? I mean, it's a temporary realm and false reality. Okay, now, verse 6, what does it say? Blessed are those who what? Hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Filled with what? The Holy Spirit. Oh, snap. So you've got a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Not only do you got to seek it, but you got a hunger and thirst for it. Because when you do not seek it and you're not producing the fruit of righteousness, that means we have grieved the Holy Spirit. We grieve the Holy Spirit. Blessed, it means, you know, righteousness. We're, we're, we are blessed then. We're right standing with God. We desire righteousness. We want to be filled with the spirit of righteousness and truth. When people stop seeking righteousness and everything they, they do, every decision they make, is this righteous? Is this righteous? Is this righteous? Is this righteous? In other words, is that what God accepting? Anything that God does not accept is not righteous. That's where his greatest desire is that you and I see what he sees. That is greatest desire for his children. That we see what he sees. 1 Timothy 4. Realms and realities. Everybody okay? Verse 1, it's a, such a fight over reality. That's why sometimes you go, man, that person is really deceived. Why? Because they're living in false reality. In verse 1, now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. There you are. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So he's saying, he's warning us. Many will fall from righteousness and the true reality from the eternal realm by grieving the Holy Spirit. They will fall from it by grieving the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they're not making a decision of righteousness. They're making a decision of good or evil. There's a lot of things good, but it ain't righteous in the eyes of God. Many will fall from righteousness in the true reality from the eternal realm by grieving the Holy Spirit, accepting the voice and the letter of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. And what usually happens is because they lack in prayer, praise, worship, eating the word of God, and fellowship. That's why the word tells us abide, abide, and abide. Why? Because it brings accountability. You may not know you're drifting, but somebody else will. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So in this, it's fellowship of accountability, falling in. Many fall into pride of the false reality. The moment you think you made it, you blew it. Nobody's made it. Until you get home in front of dad. You! <laughs> Some people think they made it. Now you nobody made it yet, man. First Peter chapter 4. Verse 7, realms and realities. Sometimes when we don't have the reality of the connection, the true reality connected to the eternal realm, false reality connected to the temporary realm. In verse 7, please. 
At the end of all things are at hand, therefore be what? Serious, Serious and what? Watchful. Be in your what? Prayers. Well, people, some of the people just ain't serious and watchful in their prayers, and they wonder why things happen. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for the love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has uh, received a gift, minister to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let them speak the oracles of God. And if anyone ministers, let them do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials or challenges which is going to try you or challenge you as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he's blasphemed, but on your part he's glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, thief, or evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? Well, you know where they'll appear. Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as a faithful creator. Judgment is in the house of God. Warning. America has been under a warning ever since the eclipse. It was a warning. It was like the Passover. It was a warning. Since that Passover, God has released a 40 days of repentance. He's trying to get his people. That's why judgment's in the house of God. Why he's warning us. <clears throat> the United States is under a warning. <clears throat> America's under a warning. Why? Because sin has increased tremendously. We are, have got Sodom and Gomorrah in this country now. It's not only the days of Noah, but it's the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we're seeing the days of Noah. Look, look at the floods and the fires and all kinds of stuff. Ever since the eclipse, there's been tremendous disasters. We've had Harvey, the hurricane, right? Look at the floods. Look at how many people destroyed billions and billions of dollars. Thousands and thousands of homes. 30-something thir thir thousand people homeless and all kinds of stuff. That's phenomenal. Warning. Warning. Flood. Warning. Now we got another hurricane coming that we're battling against. Warning. Do you know that 1.4 million acres have already burned in the West and still burning right now? Warnings. Everything is warning. 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 People should be awakening. See, they're so caught up because they're living in a false reality that everything is hunky-dory. Well, it's not hunky-dory. There's going to be a lot more exposure. Remember, the beginning of this year, the prophetic word was called exposure. It means high magnitude of exposure. That was the word for 2017. Exposure. And my goodness, you talk about exposure. It is definitely a high magnitude of exposure. Amen? There are many, many groups and organizations and so forth that are anti-Christ, anti-Trump, anti-whatever. They're being paid to do evil things because people are serving money as God instead of, there is no righteousness in it. Even believers are no, many people call themselves believers are not producing the fruit of righteousness. The word says you cannot serve two masters. He says you cannot serve, if he said you could serve two masters, that means you'd be okay. But because you can't serve two masters, that means you're in danger of death, hell, and the grave. Amen? Amen. Philippians 3. It, the temperature of global warming is not raising enough for all of this. That speck of a temperature is not the problem.
Philippians chapter 3. It's the battle for reality. That's the problem. Causing all kinds of stuff. Remember the world has lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. And those who are friends of the world are enemies of God. Philippians 3, 17. Let's speak it. Rather join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able to even to subdue all things to himself. Wow. He's talking about those, the difference between those who live in false reality and true reality. And I'm going to close in Philippians 2. In verse 12. Realms and realities. Verse 12, therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. Holding fast the word of life so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Realms, realities, the connection between them, Vitally important. If you are not producing the fruit of righteousness, you are living in the false reality. That's why he says, seek, seek, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Things will be added to you. Thirst and hunger for his righteousness and you will be filled. It's real simple. Righteousness is everything. If we're not producing the fruit of righteousness, then we're out of order. We're living in a false reality. And the kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So something's not right. This is what separates the goat from the sheep. Amen. I'm going to say it again. This is what separates the goat from the sheep. This is what separates deception from truth. It is time that we awaken in every arena and stay filled with the Spirit of God. Stay fellowship. Abide. Eat and drink and be merry in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for the word of truth. We thank you for the reality and the realms. We thank you for true reality. We ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you'll raise up warriors, warriors, those that are common citizens in the kingdom, kick them in the butt. Raise them up, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Break the religiosity off your people and raise them up as warriors as we combat in these evil days right now, Lord, so that your kingdom and your government can be established on earth as it is in heaven in preparation for your return for the final harvest that you're getting ready to gather. We want to be a part of it. And we want to give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.